This video here is for the real men out here. I'm talking about the real men who are dealing with child support. The real man that's going through so much because they keep trying to be in their child's life. But the baby mama is using the children against you. See, all men are not deadbeats. I know quite a few brothers who are going through so much and they got to fight the system all the time. And then I know brothers out here who don't care nothing for being in their children's life. And they continue to make babies after babies after babies. Don't want to, don't even want to be in the child's life at all. But all men, like I was saying, are not deadbeats. This is a, a touchy subject. Um, the child, our children, are always caught up in the middle of the grown folks' mess. I look at so many men who may not be making the money they want, but the money that they have, the job that they have, they do all they can to support their children. And not all women are like this. There are some women out here who don't have their baby daddies on child support. But then there are some women out here that don't want to work. And all they depend on is the child support. And then you got all these women out here. I ain't saying everybody. A lot of, let me let me use the term, a lot of, who will take the child support check, money, for their own personal use. They'll be looking good, but the children need shoes, need clothes, need a new jacket, need this, need that. And what does that say about you as a mother? But you are hurting that child so much. Mm. See, a lot of these women that do this, they don't really understand when the, when that child gets older, when they get grown, they come, they go, it, it's going to come back on you real hard. And they're going to want to know, why did you keep me from my daddy? See, when the truth come out, but once again, I'm talking about, in this video, I'm talking about the good men. I'm not here to down you and bash you because you're on child support. However, whatever you went through that led to that, that's your business. What I'm here to say is that it's, it is a lot of good men out there who want their children, and the woman is using the child against them. And then look at how many brothers that have took care of, of a child that they thought that was theirs. And then years and years down the road, they find out from a DNA test that never was their son or daughter. Why you still was calling them nothing. And they don't help take care of somebody else's. Or they may be the only father they know. I knew this dude I used to work with. He paid child support for 16 years. On a son that wasn't even his. And then the baby mama came back and said, I knew all along. But I told him he was yours. And you accepted that. You've been giving him money, 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 money. See, that's another thing I want to address in this video. When you, man, when you just giving these women cash, you, you really don't have no proof. What's wrong with a money order? You need to be able to track stuff down. That way, when you do go to when you do go to court, here's your proof. You can easily say, "Well, I gave him three hundred dollars cash last month." How you gonna prove it? Mm. That's what gets so many men, and you know, like that in trouble. It's like when you get to court, the judge's gonna be like, "Where your paperwork? Show me, prove it." When you go to court, you gotta have proof. 
And I hate that the system is all in your business like that because of what went down. But you got to realize it's a lot of men out here who are trying. I remember this one, um, this one dude, he was a hard working brother. But he was married at first and then he got divorced. The wife at the time, she was never happy with, with what she had. She never was satisfied. And she was one of those materialistic type of women who always wanted, if it, if it was a four bedroom house, she wanted a six. If it was, if it was a, a, a new car coming out, she had to have it. If it was the latest fashion designer coming out, dresses or whatever, purses, she had to have it. And he would work two or three jobs just to keep her happy, try to keep her happy at least. And he finally realized it didn't matter what he did. She was never going to be satisfied or happy because she was stuck on material things. But he spent all the time with the kids. All the money that he made went into the house. It wasn't enough for her. Then a divorce happened. Then she got with a baller. <laughs> At least she thought he was a baller. And when her life took a turn for the worse, you know she was trying to crawl back to. The one that had the less. There's a movie called um, 35 and Ticking. I don't know if y'all ever seen it. I think Russ Paul produced that movie. It had Kevin Hart in there. Um, Darius McCray, McCray from Family Matters. He played the big time basketball player in there. And there was a there was a woman in there. I can't think of her real name in real life. I know she was off of that girlfriend show. But she was not happy with the one she was married to. And he got up and worked every day. He was awesome with the kids. He was raising the kids while she was out partying that night. Clubbing, hanging out. And then she came home and said, one day I can't do this no more. I didn't sign up for this, Phil. <laughs> she played the name Coco in the movie. And Phil, Phil was busting his butt, even though he was just, he was, he, he was, um, you know, he was de 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 delivering water. She told him that wasn't enough. They had a house. She wanted the basketball player who was running all the women, which was played by Darius McCray. And then she found out that in the long run, that baller status, it wasn't for her. So she she started crawling back to Phil at the end of the movie. Well, now she wanted to see her kid. She left her own kids to go move in with him. It's women out here like that. It's men out here like that. But why is the good brothers, a lot of them throwed on that child support when they're already taken care of? of their child. And then you got women out here that don't want to work at all. I'm not talking about all women. They brag about, I ain't got to work. I had a homegirl like this. She dead and gone now. She would always throw it up in the other women's face. While you working hard, girl, I'm at the house. She had a big old house on Section A. Big old five-bedroom house. Would brag on it. Got fur coats. See, to, to, to me, a, a lot of times, man, Section 8 makes a lot of these women lazy. I ain't talking about everybody on Section 8 is lazy. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you got those ones out here that will be bald and out of control. You got, you got nice vehicles, and, 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 and some of them put rims on their vehicles, and they throw it up in other women's face, and your rent is $75 a month. You maybe be paying $150 at the most. I don't know how it is in y'all states. House bigger than yours. Two-car garage. And you bragging because the government is helping you out. Why this other woman is stressed out because she's really working and trying to get help. <laughs> but this child support thing, this never supposed to have been this way when you look at it from a biblical aspect. Two supposed to came one flesh. We supposed to have been in the covenant. And once the man is gone from the house, 
This is why we got so many single women. And don't act like it ain't happening in Christianity because in Christianity, the, the divorce rate is sky high and been for a long time. With JT, they go to church. And look at how many pastors done been remarried. Look at how many people in church period done went through two or three marriages. Divorced again. Or look at how many people in Christianity right now are married but separated. That ain't what they say about the covenant. But here's the question again. Who put you together? I don't even know why I'm going all this in this video. Holy Spirit just led me there. This is not the down talk nobody. These are facts. This is what's really going on in this world system. I got partners I went to school with. Wives that just left them. They stuck with the kid. See, what I hate about this world, they act like it ain't no men, no single men out here raising their children. They always want to make it seem like it's the, it's the, oh, it's the mother. It's, man, there's some brothers out here, man, that's going through ups and downs, man, struggling. But they ain't on no, and, and some of them, you think about it, the woman don't even help them out because they left them. But you don't hear about that a lot. It's always you hear about single women. What about the single fathers? Who are raising their children by themselves. While the woman is out doing whatever. I've seen brothers in tears behind this child support. I know one brother that I used to work with. He was paying heavy child support. But then the truth came out. They had to back pay him. <laughs> and he not once turned his back on the child. But they had to back pay him. The day he found out they had to back pay him, he took off running down the street. Because he had a good job. But the child support was kidding that check. You know, once you start adding up everything and then you look at child support being taken out. And you know in your mind and you know everything you're doing in your power to do right. But here's this woman still trying to use the child against you. Don't you know as a, women, don't you know you're taking food out of your own children's mouth? Well, if he can't pay, I'm going to get him locked up. He ain't going to never pay now. <laughs> He locked up. What can he do if he locked up? Well, I'm, uh, and, and then some women won't even go take him off the child support, knowing that the truth done came out. You ain't even got it in your heart to. <clears throat> brother TJ, I feel your email, brother. I, I'm, I'm responding back to you, too, in this video. I meant to say that at the beginning. I, I feel you. I feel you. They won't even take you off. And then some men, they never even want to know if it was their child or not. Man, I just accepted it, you know. Hey, she mine. She mine, man. And then you find out she not. If you find out. I know some of the brothers say, man, I don't even, at this point, I don't even want to know. She mine. But then you got them brothers out there that have been paying all that child support and she wasn't yours. But at the same time, your heart. See, it takes it, it takes some 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 serious some seriousness of being in the Holy Spirit to take care of business the right way. Being a man, and then you got a lot of men out here that don't agree with when another man take care of another man's child. They used to call them simps back in the day. Man, you a simp to do something like that. But is you so much of a simp when that child gets older and they become popular or famous or got a good job and they come back and take care of you as the stepfather, <laughs> as the stepmother? 
See, I don't even use the term step. I don't. When I when I met my wife, my wife already had Dee Dee had Gabby already. Gabby was a little old bitty girl, little bit girl. And I said, if this is my wife, father, I ain't worried about. I didn't have her, you know, like that. She mine, and I love her dearly, with all my heart. I love her just like I had sex with Diddy and Adam. That's my daughter. I don't even like the name Step. This is my stepdaddy. This is my stepfather. This is my stepmother. I don't like the name Step. Just me personally. I'm just talking about for me. Because I look at my heavenly father that took all of us in. Whew, teach on the spirit. Now, what if y'all would turn his back on us as the father? And here's an innocent child that didn't even ask to be here. And you mad because somebody else stepping up to take care of him? No. If you're going to love that woman, you're going to love them children or that child. I mean, if, if, if that's who you're going to be with, you're going to love them just as well. And you should not show favoritism. I've said enough in this video. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and close out if you can and will tune in live tonight. We're going to talk about how Christ, Yahshua, was tempted in the wilderness and how he handled temptation. So tonight's topic, once again, temptation. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed night. If you can make it in, see, excuse me, see you there at 9.30 p.m. Dallas, Texas time. Shalom, family.